Last week, I was trying to find a phrase to describe the DNA of small groups. I was hungry, though, so I was a little distracted. I thought about donuts, but it just brings back really bad memories. I ended up getting Italian. It's something about Italian food that really brings people together. Hmm, maybe that's it. Mm. Jesus said no. Oh, hey Jim. Uh, we're just trying to find a word to describe small groups. Um, community. You know, life is better when people are connected. <laughs> My work here is done. Well, good morning, everyone. I am Stephen Sanchez. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and welcome. Welcome those who are listening online and in the uh, platinum seating. A special welcome to my family watching back in the States. Welcome. And um, <clears throat> I tell you what, this, uh, watching these clips are probably one of the hardest things for me to do. I mean, it is horrible. Um, I'm definitely no Brad Pitt when it comes to acting. Yes, I may look like him, <laughs> but my acting is far from it. So um, we're glad uh, to have you here this morning. And as you know, uh, or you may not know, we have been going through this series called This is Fellowship, the things that we value. And so the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the things that fellowship values, the things that we build our church upon. Two weeks ago, Pastor Jim talked about that we are transparent. We value being transparent. And so we want to be open and honest and real with one another. We're a church that loves everyone and our arms are open wide no matter what background you come from, no matter where you're, what life stage you're at, no matter age or where you've grown up, you are always welcomed here at Fellowship. He also talked about how one of the things that we value here is the, uh, the gospel and, and we want to share God's truth with everyone. If you remember last week, Pastor Graham talked about being relevant. Now we want to talk about real issues, real things that matter to our lives, things that we deal with at work and at home and in our family. And we look and we get our direction and guidance from God's truth. And that's where we delve deep into the Bible and, and try to understand what does God have to say about godly living? And that brings us to this week, which is we value being connected. We value being connected. And I heard stories um, about what the church used to be like here at Fellowship of the Armors. Now, I've been on staff for about three years now, and uh, prior to us meeting here in the Gloria, we used to meet in the Arjon. And the church, church was started back in 2006, and before the Arjon, it started, uh, it was met at Al Noor School, and before Al Noor School, it started in a house. And I heard that some of those meetings were about four or five hours long. Could you believe that? Four or five hours long. So we decided we're going to implement old school. So if you guys can go ahead and lock the doors, uh, we're going to be here for a couple hours. No, but they, they uh, listen to a sermon. They sing some praise and they prayed for one another. And they all got up and they walked into the kitchen and they cooked a meal and they hung out. And they're this community and they're together and they enjoyed relationships with one another. And as our church begins to grow more and more, it seems so difficult to have that small feeling. And there's something about being small that just feels, it just feels good. It feels right. It feels like you're, you're home. I was reading on Instagram last week, one of uh, the members here at Fellowship writes this, packed in like sardines with complete strangers shoulder to, stro shoulder to shoulder in 40 degree heat, the perils of a large church in Dubai. And not everyone is back in the sand pit yet. Thankful I was able to leave and find my own little piece of heaven in the back row of the overflow, missing my UK friends and family. 
You know, I often hear, I wish, I wish we were smaller. We're just so big now. As people say, no, one, no one's ever said hi to me while I was here. No one knows who I am. I feel invisible. There's just something about being small that just feels right. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you've been coming to fellowship, or maybe it's your first time and you're overwhelmed with the size. You feel like you're just another face in the crowd. Maybe you've been coming for a while and no one has ever greeted you. And I want to be the first person to say, and along with the pastoral staff, that we are deeply sorry. We truly, truly care and we love for everyone who walks through these doors. It's never our intention to overlook or to to think that you're just another person. We want to love every single person that comes to Fellowship of the Evermore. We want to welcome you with arms wide open. But the dilemma is as we grow, it becomes more and more difficult, doesn't it? You know, some people would even say that the size of this church maybe isn't even biblical, that God intended the church to be small, to be intimate. I don't, I don't believe that to be true. I mean, you look at the Old Testament and thousands upon thousands of people would gather to, to worship and sing hymns and praise, to hear and listen to instruction, to greet one another. We look at the New Testament and we see Jesus. When he teaches, there's occasions where he'd teach 5,000. It says 5,000 men. We can assume that there may have been nine to 12,000 people in total. And as he began to instruct them, I'm not sure he didn't stop his meeting and say, all right, guys, it's time to break up into small groups. You're not understanding what I'm trying to communicate. No, he, he met and engaged large amounts of people. But what is it about a big church? What is it about a big gathering or crowd that just makes us sometimes feel so unwelcomed? Well, this morning I want to talk about how do we connect here at fellowship? What, is it, what does it mean to, to connect? Because I believe there's there's a lot of misconceptions, first, of what church even is, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So as we get into it this morning, would you pray with me? Let's pray. Well, God, I thank you so much, Lord, for this day. I thank you that as we look at your word and as we talk about community, Lord, that we would be a church that values it. God, is, it has been the foundation since the birth of Fellowship of the Emirates, we pray that it would continue to grow in connecting with one another. Lord, we value being connected because you value us being connected. So Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So what is church? Church. What is community? Maybe to, to answer that question, we need to go back a little bit and understand when did the church actually begin? Many of you know the story. There's a Jewish man who's before thousands and thousands of men. And he began to proclaim the death and resurrection of Jesus. See, there's a time during what they call the feast, the week of feast, Pentecost. There's three festivals that every Jewish man needed to migrate to Jerusalem for three times a year. Pentecost, the week of feast, was one of them. And so at this time, thousands and thousands of men funneled into into Jerusalem. 50 days after Passover, And here this Jewish man began to communicate and to proclaim about his Jewish friend, the Messiah. Jesus, Jesus came and he died. 
for our sins. And he began to proclaim the gospel. He began to proclaim this truth. You see, right before this, for 40 days after Jesus resurrected, he walked amongst man. He ascended up into heaven and he told them to wait for he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And as they were waiting up in this upper room, the Holy Spirit descended upon these men and they began to speak different languages and this crowd began to gather. And they began to say, these men are drunk. They speak foolishness because they didn't understand what he was saying, what they were saying. And that takes us to Peter begins to address this large amount of people. And this is what he says in Acts chapter 2, the, the, the beginning. He says, Follow, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. You see, this wasn't new to them. They understood Jesus walked all around Jerusalem and outer Jerusalem through the Sea of Galilee, performing miracles and signs and wonders to affirm that he was the Messiah. All these men heard of what Jesus was doing. And so Peter begins to proclaim this. Verse 23, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge in you with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. He continues in verse 36, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah, Again, they didn't understand who Jesus was when he was walking amongst the land. And here, Peter boldly proclaims that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who was come to save. And listen to the response in verse 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number day, that day. 3,000. Could you imagine that crowd? Peter stood and addressed this large crowd. He shared the gospel with them. And it birthed, it birthed this movement. And we see, we see what the response was. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship to breaking of bread and to prayer, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who, they needed, who needed it. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts, a large gathering. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You see, when this birthed 50 days after Jesus died and resurrected, 50 days after this movement began to happen, it wasn't a name attached to it, they simply called it The Way. Many of you who were here back in 2012, Pastor Jim spoke through the book of Acts and he taught on the way that changed the world. The way that changed the world. There was this movement of people, this gathering, moving in the same direction. Later on in Antioch, they are called Christians. 
And later on in the book of Acts, they're called the church. The church. Now, I give you this history because it's very important for us to understand what this means as far as to be a community. So give me about two more minutes and it will all make sense. Church translated in, from the Greek is ekklesia. 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 From the Greek word ek, from or out of. Kaleo, to call, to call out of. Ekklesia. Can you say that with me? Ekklesia. Well, that was horrible. I want to be encouraging, but that was pretty bad. Are you ready? Ekklesia. Ekklesia. It was used in the ancient Greek. It would refer to a gathering of people. It didn't refer to a building. It didn't refer to a location. It referred to a gathering of people. But there's something that has happened in our culture that has us thinking church and ecclesia very differently. There's a man by the name of Andy Stanley in his book, Deep and Wide. Andy Stanley says this, whereas the majority of your English Bible is a word-for-word -word translation of the Greek text, so your New Testament was written in Greek, not so in this case. The word church is not a translation from the Greek. It is a substitution for the Greek and a bad one at that. The German term Kirsha, Kirsha, any German speakers out there? Did I say it right? Kirsha. I said it wrong last time and three or four people came up to me and <laughs> offended a lot of people. So Kirsha. The German term Kirsha. So before we had our English translation, we had a, uh, a German translation. So the German term Kirsha and the Greek term Ekklesia refer to two different things. A Kirsha is a location, and Ekklesia is a purposeful gathering of people. You can lock the doors of a Kirsha, not so with an Ekklesia of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I am so guilty of people saying, oh, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm going to church. Oh, what did you do? I went to church. Oh, after church, we'll go grab lunch. Church is not a location. Church, ecclesia, is a movement, is a gathering of people that are intertwined, being in relationship with one another. And yet because of our misconceptions, sometimes we come to church and it simply is a location. And yet that's never what Jesus intended, what this is supposed to be like. It was never supposed to be a kirche. It was always supposed to be an ecclesia. So what is an ecclesia? How do, how do those a part of an ecclesia relate to each other? Many of you know the one another's in the Bible that we see throughout the New Testament and Jesus speaks of them, the apostles speak of them. To love one another. Here's what the ecclesia is supposed to be like. To love one another, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above ourselves. Live in harmony with one another. Stop judging one another over non-moral issues. Build up one another. Accept one another. Instruct one another. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Wait. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Well, let's be biblical here, guys. <laughs> Go ahead and turn to your neighbors. Hey, I saw a couple people. I like that. We're that type of church. So, hey, someone comes up to you, gives a big kiss. It's just being biblical. Greet one another with a holy kiss. It's funny, me and my fr I won't go into it. <clears throat> Wait for one another. Have equal concern for one another. Serve one another in love. Bear one another's burdens. Be humble, gentle, and patient with one another. Forgive one another. Speak to one another with psalms 
hymns, and spiritual songs. Submit to one another. Consider others more important than ourselves. Don't lie to one another. Teach one another. Comfort one another in times of grief. Encourage one another. Be at peace with one, one another. Always try to be kind with one another. Do not slander one another. Do not grumble against one another. Confess your sins to one another. Offer hospitality with, with one another without grumbling. Clothe yourselves with humi- humility towards one another. This is ecclesia. This is the church. A crowd gathering on Friday at a location isn't. You see, if you go back to Acts chapter 2, there were large crowds that were receiving instruction, teaching, how to live, hearing the gospel, and it was a good thing, singing praise in hymn and songs. But after they left the temple court, it says they met in each other's homes. And we see that being a crowd isn't a bad thing at all. It's encouraged. But I believe if we really want to be connected, especially as our church grows and as it has grown, the only way we're going to be able to be connected in an ecclesia way is, I believe, is in our small groups. And that's what I'm up here for this morning, is to share with you that we are not just a church on Friday morning, but we are an ecclesia that meets throughout the week. That we want to see us living these things out day to day in a community. I want you to be connected with people. I don't want you to be just another face I want you to come on Friday morning and if no one says hi to you, you know that you have a home group that loves you dearly and they're gonna call and they know if something's going on at home. They know if you're not having a great relationship with your spouse or you're having difficulty at work or you're struggling financially. And we call these things two for two groups. Two for two groups. We get it from Acts 2.42. We just read it, and it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread, to fellowship, and to prayer. And these two for two groups meet throughout the week, all throughout UAE, in Al Ain, Abu Dhabi, in Sharjah, in Ras Al-Hema, many, many, many in Dubai, And they're a place where we're able to connect and to be part of a two for two group is so beneficial. They know how to pray for you, man. When the in laws come, they're the place to complain to them about. (laughs) I mean, for if if any reason why you're in a small group, it's just to complain about the in laws. It's a great place. They understand. They're there for you. But it really is a place where people get to know one another. We try our best at fellowship on Friday morning to create an environment, to create an atmosphere, to create areas and ways in which we can connect. But listen, it will never go deep. It will never get small if it's just happening on Friday morning. Isn't it true? I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I long for those deep, intimate relationships. There's something about those deep, deep relationships where no matter what I'm going through, I can just give them a call. And they're going to be there for me. And in Dubai, a, in UAE, a, it's a big place. I mean, you might have your family, but doesn't mean you don't feel lonely as a family. Maybe you're single, you feel lonely as a single. Maybe a young married couple. 
trying to understand life. But being an ecclesia is where we're going to fulfill that longing for friendship. See, because we were created to be connected. We were created to be connected. First, we were, we were created to be connected with God. You were created. God created you. God created you because he wanted to be in a relationship with you. That's the purpose. It's the purpose of why God created us. He says, if you want to be in that relationship, it's going to come through Jesus. And I want to be connected with you. Second, we were created to be connected with one another. We were created to be in relationships with one another. Now, since <clears throat> I'm teaching and um, I, I can somewhat do what I'd like to do, one of the things I would like to do is I would like to give you all the opportunity to sign up for a small group. Now, I'm going to make this so easy for you because on all of your chairs, you guys have one of these. And most of you should have a pen. It says, find your 242 group. Find your community. Huh? Pretty nifty. What you can do right now, I'm going to give you time in service right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you pass them all into the center and we're going to collect them. So right now, go ahead and start writing. If you're interested in joining a small group, just to write your name, your email, and your area of town. Now, if you sign up, this is no obligation for you to go to a small group. Though if I know the area that you live in and your name, I'm going to be driving down your neighborhood honking, circling, because I know the days that we meet drag you guys out. If you don't have any of these cards, you can raise your hand and the ushers can give you one if you're interested in joining a 242 group. It does not get any easier than this than just to write down your information. And we will contact you. And you can either decide to go or not to go. But listen, we want you to be connected And one of the things that we're going to do this next week is let's say you're just not ready to join a small group yet. It's a little weird. You don't know anyone. Well, every small group, every small group in Fellowship of the Emirates is going to have a social next week. So, we have groups that are going down to the beach and having a picnic, to a park, playing football. They're going to have cheese and um, a cheese tasting, barbecue and game night. All these people are doing all sorts of different ways in order for you guys to go and just enjoy community. Once you go, you're still not even obligated to keep going, but just go and enjoy community. So all of the small group leaders are all out there. So after service, you can go up to them and say, hey, I'm interested in your social. And I'm going to let you know, are you all done writing your things down? So I'm going to have the, if you guys all put, put them all towards the center, I'm going to have the ushers come and collect them. And we're going to email you tomorrow. If you signed up, we're going to email you tomorrow and let you know where the 242 social is going to be. Or we want you to bring, put them all in. Or if you just want to go talk to a small group leader, they are all out there. They're all out there ready to talk with you. We have them all over Dubai, all over Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, Ras al -Hema. We got the Ras al -Hema right here wanting a shout out. So right now, as you guys are pushing the, putting them forward, turning them in, I'm going to invite one of our small group leaders. I'd like just to ask him some questions. 
And uh, so will you welcome Damon Buck with me? Well, welcome, Damon. Um, one of the reasons uh, why I invited Damon up here, uh, mainly is because he is a really, really good-looking guy. <laughs> he is. I call him my man crush Friday. Just, you can hashtag it, throw it up on Instagram, it's fine. And um, ladies, he is single. And are you ready to mingle? Yes. There we go. So, um, Damon leads our small group in the JLT, Jamera Lake Towers, and it's one of, uh, uh, it's a group that um, has just expanded. Um, see, all the girls are talking about you. <laughs> Go ahead and throw up his phone number. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. Well, um, Damon, could you... Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, how long have you been in Dubai for and um, where, are you from, where are you from and, and what do you do? Uh, first of all, thanks for the great intro, Steve. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I am originally from Durban, South Africa. Uh, quite a few of you out there. Uh, I haven't actually lived there for a while. I grew up in Malawi. Went to university in uh, Washington State in America. Uh, yeah. uh, spent a year in Sydney, Australia, and then moved to Dubai. Uh, and I've been here for two years. I am a graphic designer, and I work for a pretty exceptional private investment company in uh, the IFC, along with a couple of other familiar faces from Fellowship. Um, and yeah. Good. And. Uh... <clears throat> What uh, led you to, to lead um, one of the, the small groups here at, at Fellowship of the Emirates? I've uh, always kind of felt a calling from God to get more involved in ministry, but I always was uh, kind of afraid that I didn't know enough or wasn't experienced enough to be able to lead anyone. But uh, as I've kind of grown in my, in my faith, I kind of realized that that's really where Jesus wants me, is to kind of not know anything so I can rely on him more. And uh, as I began to believe that and accept that, I think the opportunity just presented itself. Hmm. Uh, Andrew Dust was my uh, small group leader in JLT, and uh, he actually set up a great example. I was speaking to him after the first service. Uh, he uh, actually met his uh, current wife in a small group, and uh, he had to move on because he was starting a family. So I was like, i got to follow that guy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the, uh, Andrew was moving on, and there was an opportunity to step up and uh, lead a small group. And I Great. Thought, this is my chance. I'll do it. Great. And, and what do you think, what, what would you tell them, what is the best part about being a part of a, of a 242 group um, here? What would you say? I probably just have to echo everything you just mentioned in the sermon, Stephen. Um, it's, to me, the best part is that it's, uh, there's a real sense of community. Uh, Dubai can be a pretty difficult place to live if you don't really know anyone. And I think that's mainly because it's such a diverse uh, society. Um, I absolutely love the opportunity to be able to uh, meet with people from different walks of life. Um, and while I can find that in the workplace or joining a sports club or finding a hobby, there's something a lot more real about meeting people in a small group and meeting with people that kind of share and relate to the, the love of Jesus. So, um, yeah, that's probably the, the best well, part about thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's just great. He's one of, of many leaders here uh, that are running a small group, and um, I can't encourage you enough to, to be a part of a two-for-two two group. Be a part of a, of a community. And I think, like I said before, I think we all long for those relationships. And we also have on our website, if you don't want to sign up, you can go to our website and click right here under, under ministry. You know, bring up this page right here, fellowshipdubai.com. And you just click on 242 groups and all of our small groups are listed there. 
You can email them, call them, and say, hey, I would love to, to be a part of your small group. This is where, this is where life's going to happen. This is, where, this is where being connected is going to happen.